What's going on engineers? This is part six of the Node.js basic series and it's going to be on async and await. If you're coming from the previous video on promises, then you now know there's a better way to handle callbacks rather than Node.js style callbacks. If you're not coming from the previous video, you should probably watch that before watching this one, but it's not absolutely required. So the primary difference between promises and async await is that with promises, you take an asynchronous action and then you register a callback function to run once that asynchronous action finishes. With async and await, rather than registering a callback function, you simply await on the value. And we're going to look at a bunch of examples here in a second, but what this does is it brings Node.js programmers a lot closer to what resembles synchronous programming. If you're coming from languages like Python, Ruby, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, then what you're going to see in a second is going to look really normal to you. So let's get to it. So in each of these examples, for comparison, I pulled the example from the promises video into this video, and then I converted it to the async await version. Before I continue, let's look at the two new keywords, async and await. The way the async keyword works is if you want to make a function async, you simply put async in front of it. So in this case, I put async in front of the anonymous function. But if I had a named function, I could do async function a or whatever the name of the function is, and that would work as well. So besides declaring your function as asynchronous, the async keyword has two primary effects on your function. The first thing it does is it allows you to use the await keyword in it. Without the async keyword, using await would be considered an error. The second thing the async keyword does is it makes that function return a promise. If the function already returns a promise, then it's simply returned as is. But if you return just a normal value, like a string, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna wrap that string in a promise. I wrote a simple example here which shows three functions and I did this to show that all three of these are exactly identical in what they return. In this case function A returns a promise containing the value A. Function B with the async keyword also returns a promise with the value B. And then in the third one async function C this returns an implied promise. This gets automatically wrapped in promise.resolve. And we can test this out over here. You see promise A, promise B, and promise C. So those are all identical. As far as the await keyword goes, it's very simple. The await keyword just says, freeze the program right here and await the value from the promise returning function called whatever, in this case, read. Now one note before we continue, you'll see I have var run and then an async anonymous function. The reason I need this is because all of this code is called top-level code. It's basically code that's ran as soon as you run the file. However, if you're in a bigger program, you're always going to be inside a function, so you're always going to be able to mark it as async. And since the await keyword only works in functions marked async, I had to wrap it in something, otherwise it would have been an error. They are working on support for basically top-level async, which would remove the need to have that line and that line but it's not here as of Node.js 8, so we're, we're gonna cover it as is. Okay, so for the rest of the video, we're just gonna look at differences between the promise version and the async version. So with the promise version, recall that read is an asynchronous function that reads the contents of data1.txt, and then you use dot then to register a callback, which is ran once the file is read, and then data contains the data from the file. So the result of this particular program is that it's going to output the contents in data1.txt. So now for the async await version, you'll notice that I'm still using the exact same call for the asynchronous function. However, rather than using dot then and a callback function, I'm simply putting the await keyword in front of it. So what's going to happen is it's going to get to this line. It's going to call the read function, and then it's going to just pause the program until it reads that file. Once it reads the file, then the data variable will be populated with the data from the file and then it can be outputted here, just like it was up here. So like I said earlier, if you're coming from Python, Ruby, or languages like that, this looks like exactly what you've always been used to. And, and, and you're right, this is, this is basically like synchronous programming. However, there is a bit of magic occurring that makes it not so synchronous, and that's the asynchronous nature of Node.js to begin with. So next is resolving multiple promises, in this case, reading multiple files. So in the promise version, use promise.all, and you pass it an array of all the promises. You would continue to use dot then, specify a callback function once it's read all three of the files, and then unpack data1, data2, data3 from the data variable. From there you can output the data from all three. So now for the async and await version, 
the unpacking is moved to in front of the function. So it's saying data1, data2, data3 equals await on promise.all. So just like in the other one, it freezes the program right here. It reads all three files and then unpacks the data into these three variables. And then from there you can output them. Again, the biggest difference is there's no callback function and things are pushed closer to the left in this case. Whereas up here, you know, it's kind of nested. Remember our floppy disk joke program from the previous video? This is the promise version. Floppy disk, you know, load disk one, data one. Prompt, please insert disk two, load disk two, data two, please insert disk three, and so on. Now if you remember what this used to look like with the node style callbacks with the huge pyramid, this was a massive improvement upon that. But now look at the async and await version. This is clearly an even bigger improvement than the promises one was on the node style callbacks one. Now you may notice something new here, and that's the await keyword at the beginning. It's not actually putting the value anywhere. And this is a way to execute an asynchronous function where you just want to know when that function completes. You don't actually care what the return value is. In this case, you simply await on it right there, and you don't have to put the value anywhere. So in this program, it's going to load disk1. It's going to prompt for disk2, pause right there until disk2 is ready, and then get the data for disk2. Continue to disk3, and so on. And the final example was our example from Engineer Man Knowledge Center. In this example, db.challenges.find1 is an asynchronous function which returns a promise. From here you continue to call dot then, specify a callback function, and then the variable challenge will be the value of challenge from the database. You can then perform whatever action you want. Now let's look at the await and async version. You'll notice if I click between the two, they look pretty similar. The only difference again is no callback function. I move the variable challenge up to in front of the function and I use the await keyword. Now note that there's no async keyword and that's just because I took this code from a place where it would have been in a function. So I just, I didn't use it here because it's an exact example from Engineer Man Knowledge Center. It's not gonna execute anyways because there's no access to database and whatnot. So having now seen node style callbacks, promises, and async await, you're probably thinking, well, this is clearly the best. Why wouldn't I just use async and await all the time? And the answer is you could, but async and await is not a replacement for promises. In fact, async and await uses promises in the background. There's also times where you would not want to use await, and that's when you don't actually want to wait on it. So imagine you have an e-commerce store and somebody checks out and they buy something and you want to email them a receipt. You're not going to await on the sending of that email. You would simply defer the execution of that code asynchronously and let it execute whenever it wants. This would be a time where you absolutely would not want to use the await keyword. So I like to think that this functionality is complementary to normal promise-based callbacks. Me personally, I use a blend of both promises and async await all the time. Remember also the series is based on Node.js version 8, and async and await is brand new as of Node.js version 8. So if you're using previous versions of Node.js, then you won't be able to use async and await. So the last matter about async and await is error handling. I just wanted to switch back to a previous example. On normal promise style, remember you do dot catch, specify the error, and then here you can handle the error. With async and await, use standard JavaScript try catch. So specify your try catch block, stick your code in there, and here you can handle the error. And that's it for async and await. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below or come chat on Discord about them. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.